Hello, Get Rich Quick Guy here. I had an idea to make a special dustpan. And what I did is I actually printed stuff out using a computer, actual patterns that I'd be using. And I got a flat piece of plastic from McMaster Car. And after I got the plastic, I glued the paper patterns down, cut out the pieces, taped them together with packing tape, and formed this dustpan. And what I wanted to do is mass produce these. So what I thought is, hmm, I guess what I could do is make a mold. So what I did is I made this concrete mold that you're looking at here from basically building a clay wall. I got clay and I built a wall around here and then I poured concrete on top of this piece to create the different pieces of concrete. So this mold was created with this, this uh, plastic piece and if you, uh, if you look at this, it fits right in there. And this is just a little break, uh, but either way, after I built this piece, I poured in a two-part resin mixture from smoothcast.com. And what I used is the Smoothcast 45 two-part uh, resin one-to-one uh, -one mixture. And in 20 minutes, I was able to duplicate that part that I taped together, and I made this, which, as you can see, is not really the best uh, material because it kind of bends, but I made this using this concrete mold, like what I showed you before. But the thing is, I wanted to try to try to duplicate this faster because with the Smoothcast 45, 20 minutes is how long it takes for this uh, uh, polyurethane to cure. So what I tried to do is I tried to get this piece of plastic and make a plastic mold for it, which I would later turn into a steel mold. And so what I did is I did the same thing, cut the patterns using uh, the paper templates that I made up, and then I was able to make a plastic piece like this. And so this is what I wanted to turn into metal. But what happened is, on my way of doing that, I found out that even if I had a metal mold, <laughs> even if I had a metal mold, it wouldn't make a difference because unlike the two-part resin mixture, low-density polyethylene, which is what I would prefer to make this dustpan out of, does not flow like a liquid and take a form very easily unless you have extremely high pressure. What you're looking at over here is a low density polyethylene heated up uh, way above its melting point. But the problem is this thing does not flow. Look at that. There is like, supposedly that's as liquid as it gets. And unless you have a lot of pressure, you are not going to be able to form anything with this. See this? You, you just can't get it to take any kind of shape very easily because it's too damn thick. So I think I'm going to be stuck making a real mold and paying somebody to make a real injection mold. But uh, a homemade injection mold, probably not going to work for most people. Now, a lot of people would think that this temperature might not be high enough. Well, the melting point of low density polyethylene is 243 degrees. This skillet can go up to 500 degrees. And as you can see, this is orange here. That means that the low density polyethylene is actually burning. 
So this is as liquid as this crap is going to get. <laughs> uh, it is impossible without high pressure tooling to actually make an injection mold. So if you were thinking about making a polyethylene mold from your house, the way that you would with resin, think again. Making a piece out of, uh, making a manufactured piece from low density polyethylene is not practical without a high pressure, full on injection mold system. So there you have it. Save your money. <laughs> oh, uh, and, and just so that you know, in order to cut the steel, I used everything from Harbor Freight. What I have here are different kinds of metal shears. Um, these work very well. And I can give you a quick, quick demo of how well they work. Putting my glove on backwards here, but here's a piece of metal right here. And uh, I'm going to show you real quick. That's uh, 1 16th inch thick sheet metal. The thing is, that was not a very big cut. <laughs> I wanted to actually show you a better cut than that. But the problem with a thick piece of metal is that uh, as you cut, this little piece of rejected material is too stiff and it blocks the uh, cutter even though the cutter is plenty strong to cut. So I've got, I've got two different types of shears, both of them sold at uh, Harbor Freight and I have a chop saw. The chop saw worked well but it was slow beyond belief to cut the metal pieces to form the mold. So this piece, for example, would have formed this piece right here. And the reason I have to stop is because the polyethylene does not flow enough. And if the polyethylene does not flow enough, there is no way that, that I will be able to shape the plastic into what I want. So Get Rich Quick Guy here, signing off. If you need an injection mold, you're going to have to pay.